So last week we spent some time learning about some of the different kind of features in Excel. For example, that I can come in and I can do things like conditional formatting, or if I happen to have a lot of data, I can come in and use the pivot table. But now all of a sudden we see not always going to be sifting through data. Maybe instead I'm going to be working off of calculations. And you can see we have actually just uh, a nice little loan that we've been working off of. You know, we got Mary Beth Williams. She's got a nice, very nice credit score. That's not bad. Not bad at all. And she's going to be buying this loan out at $21,000, as long as she puts a down payment of $3,000 on it first. Now, it's going to be for three years, and we'll say that it started about six years ago. Well, just by uh, sheer fact, we can actually kind of go through a few of these steps uh, already, and that's what we've done. Uh, this is actually, if you can kind of see, the PMT. If you want to see a magic trick, hold your control key, and then that kind of symbol right beside the one, control, boop. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. So all of a sudden, you can start to see where these are coming in. So uh, the payment that I'm making every month is coming from B11 uh, divided by 12. So B11 right there is my interest rate divided by 12. Uh, B6 times 12. B6 times 12. And negative B13, which is that loan amount. That's how much money, for example, we got. Now, okay, I can't see the loan amount, so how do I switch over? Well, I just hit control and that little tilde uh, apostrophe again. So all of a sudden, you know, all right, loan amount, 18000 is still kind of waiting. So now all of a sudden I want to kind of just make a little bit of an assessment. Uh, and for example, I want to basically ask a simple question. Well, if I take this amount and I take this amount, you know, my B13, what loan amount I got, and the purchase price of that loan, did it come out to be a good ratio? Have I spent a lot of it? Or do I need to kind of give a little bit of uh, an extra uh, fee? So what I can do is I can think of this as a fork in the road. If, for example, this ratio of B13 to B4, B13 to B4, happens to be over 80% or greater than 0 0.8, then I want to go ahead and put an assessment fee of $300 on it. Otherwise, $0. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to come over here to this nice little tab called Formulas. Now, inside of Formulas, you can see that we have all of these different functions inside of Excel's disposal. You know, financial, all the different financial options you might want. Text, all the different things you want with text. Uh, lookups and references, math and trig, obviously. But we want to focus in on this logical section. Because inside that logical section, there's this thing known as if. And if you read through that kind of little statement, it checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if it happens to be true. In our case, it's 300. Or a value if it's false. In this case, our zero. So I'm going to click on if. This pulls up a nice little dialog box. And the first thing it asks is, what is my logical test? Now, that's actually what this is right here. I want to take this concept of doing a math equation like this, and then doing a comparison. That's actually kind of what the greater than symbol is doing. It's saying, whatever this math equation equates out to, let's say, is it greater than or less than 0 0.8? Well, it's actually not asking if it's greater than or less than 0 0.8. Let's see what it happens. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just come in here, and I can actually click on 18,000. Ooh, look at that, pretty. You see, it already gives me a true. Now, that's because we're working off of uh, the assumption that because there's a value and it's not doing any comparisons, the presence of a value means true. Okay, not terribly great, but for our sake, come in with that division symbol. And I'm going to go look for my B4. B4, purchase price, boom. Since it's still a value, whatever that turned out to be, it's not the absence of a value, it still comes out to be true. It's still not what I want. I want to come in and put in that greater than sign. Now, what this is going to do is it's not going to tell me whether or not this number is greater than or less than this number. It's going to say whether or not this is a true statement or a false statement. So when I come in and say 0 0.8, what I'm seeing is B13 divided by B4, B13 divided by B4, is uh, equals out to some number. And if you want to play the calculator game, go ahead. Is that number greater than 0 0.8? Well, in this case, yes, we can see it is true. However, if I had said, is it greater than 0, .0 or 
uh, greater than 1, for example, no, it is not true. So this allows me to kind of see whether or not these math equations kind of equate out correctly. Now it says value if true. And we can think of this as sort of a fork in the road. If this is a true statement, I want to come over here to 300. If this is a false statement, I want to come over here to 0. And that's actually what value if false is kind of indicating. And you can see Excel actually will give me a nice little sneak preview as well as to what sort of my kind of result will be this time. But now all of a sudden what this allows me to do is it allows me to make changes. Say for example the purchase price turned out to be $18,000. Well, I still get the assessment. But what happens if it was $15,000? Ah, see now our assessment changes because 15, 12 divided by 15 doesn't equate out. So it allows me to kind of just have a little bit more uh, mathematical control over my spreadsheet. 